ICS4U. This is an important lesson about how to use a scanner type object to parse a string. So we previously used the scanner to get keyboard input. So we were using the scanner to scan for input on the keyboard using system.in. And now we're going to see how we can use a scanner on a string to parse input from a string. So I've created a project called string scanner. Pause the video, make this string scanner method uh, class and project. Uh, and you can follow along. And uh, we need to import java.util.scanner just like we have in the past. You can also do dot .star instead of dot .scanner, but I'm just doing uh, dot .scanner. So we'll create a new scanner, and uh, I'll call it SC, just like they do in the textbook. And we're going to call it um, Hello World. So instead of putting system dot in there, we're using hello world. And that's our string. So there's the sort, and it even shows you in IntelliJ, it says what's the sort, it shows that as the source. So it's our string. We could have defined that string in a separate place and then named the string there as its variable, but that's fine. So the way a scanner works is it will scan or search until it reaches uh, what it's looking for. And by default, scanners are set up to keep scanning until they reach uh, the space. So the space is the default scanner uh, token, the default token for the scanner. So it's going to scan up to the token, in this case the space. So let's see how we can do that. We're going to say um, system.out.println sc.next. So the next method, let's just take a look at what it says about that. So after I type that in, so notice we're saying SC is our scanner object, and we're ac accessing the next method. And what does IntelliJ tell us about next? It says, finds and return the next complete token from this scanner. Okay, so the token is separated by, a, by delimiters. The delimiter, by default, and I'm going to type this in, uh, scanners default delimiter is the space. Okay it will uh, scan up until the first space to give us our first token. So when we run this program, we should expect just the first word up to the first space. So build it, run it. So it's running, and we're getting just the word hello. Hello world, how are you today? That's all. Okay, so just some more stuff. Um, we can use this in a loop. So we can say something like this, while sc dot has, and what's the method called? It's called uh, has next. Has next. While it has a token that's available. Remember the delimiter is the space. The tokens are separated by delimiters. So we'll continue to do that. So now what we'll get is we'll get each token on a separate line. So when we run it, we get every token, hello world, how are you today, all on separate lines. What if we uh, put a comma in here? Well, we would still get it separated by spaces. But we can change the delimiter to be a space. So let's say we're going to we're going to say sc.useDelimiter. So th this is another method called useDelimiter. We're going to use the comma as the delimiter. And when we build and run it, we'll see that it separates it on the, on the token. And the first token is hello world. Notice that it doesn't show the delimiter. The delimiter is not shown on the screen. It only shows the tokens that are in between the delimiters. So the first token is hello world. The second token starts with a space because the first thing after the comma is a space. And then it says, hello, uh, how are you today? It says, how are you today? Okay, so that's use delimiter. Let's change our delimiter to be um, the O, so the, the lowercase O. Lowercase. So we have a few lowercase O's in our phrase. So when we do that, we get, this looks very strange. But notice that there's no lowercase o's being printed on the screen because those are the delimiters. 
the tokens are everything in between the delimiters. So the first token is H-E-L-L. <laughs> and then um, after the O, we get space W. And then we get all the way up to the H there and so forth. All right. Uh, we can use this with uh, data that is comma separated. So it's very common when you download information from a spreadsheet or from a table or from the internet, you can get things that are comma separated, a CSV or a comma separated list. So let's see what that would look like. So I'm going to change the contents of S SC to be I'm using the wrong keys here. Okay, there we go. So we're going to say, let's just say some random data. Things are skipping all over the place for me. One, uh, five, negative two, negative two, 99, negative 50, 200. Okay, and let's say our delimiter is the comma. So let's say this is data that is in the form of, it, it's a string, and we can transfer that to numerical data later. So if we build and run it, we'll get on our separate lines all the numbers in string format, but they can be cast as an integer, as you know, by just putting an int in front of it. So that's a very useful thing. So the new methods we've gone over in this lesson, is it giving me a problem? Let's see if we try running it. It's uh, cannot convert string to integer. So we have to not, we have to do two. There's a way to do this. I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, so the way to do this, we have to remember that everything in Java is an object. So we have to parse integers out of our string. And we can do it by stating capital I for integer from the integer uh, class. And there's a method in here called parseInt. So parseInt and um, parseInt will uh, examine the string because remember at this point, our string is just a single integer. And it will detect the integer and it'll parse it. So when we run it, and well, let's just prove this to you. I'm going to prove this to you by putting a plus one. So we're going to add one to each of our values. So when we run it, instead of getting one and five and negative two, we get two and six and negative one and so forth. So it does add one to each one. Okay? All right. So the new methods that are used in this lesson are has next int. Oh, we haven't used that yet. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But we used next. Uh, there, there's some new methods as well that I'm going to show you in a second. We, we showed, but I was reading the wrong thing. We have has next. We have use delimiter. And um, we have next as well. So those are the three methods that we're using. And there's a better set of methods that are more suited for integers. Has next int, next int. So I'm going to just convert what we have into that for us uh, in a second here. We're just over eight minutes in, so I've decided to make that into the next lesson uh, video, which will show you how to use the integer-specific scanner objects, and I'll see you then.